Okay guys, we're doing Q&A. Your questions answered January 2019. I can't believe it's January 2019. Anyhow, uh, seem to be getting a lot more viewers coming in, people checking this place out. Uh, I'm kind of wondering where you guys are coming from. If anybody could let me know how you found, you know, whether you're a new viewer or an old viewer, let me know how you found this place. Did you do a search? Did somebody say, hey, check this place out? We're very curious because the chart's kind of been like this and now it's gone like that. So let us know. Anyhow, uh, Q&A 2019 of January. I'm here with Peggy and Luke. And uh, I thought I would answer a few questions because with the big influx of people coming in, uh, there are a lot of questions that are coming through that I may have covered overall, you know, sort of in the past a bit, but some of them are actually, they're, they're pretty interesting, a little bit more involved of an answer than I would like to put. Tick, 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 tapping away at the keyboard. Um, first question is actually a really easy one. And somebody asked, well, what, what breed are all of your horses? <clears throat> now we have four horses here ourselves, uh, plus some borders, but you're looking at now, Peggy's not ours, but she's a quarter horse. Uh, Luke is ours. He's an appendix. An appendix is a thoroughbred and a quarter horse mixed. We're not really sure though. He's uh, he's a rescue, so no papers. When you don't have papers on a horse, it's really hard to know for sure um, if the information you're getting is correct. So uh, you guys have seen her before. Lena, she's an Oldenburg draft or so we're told. Again, no papers, but she looks pretty drafty and kind of Oldenburgy and. So it seems kind of accurate. Um, Gracie is an Arabian. We do have papers for her. And uh, Macaroni is a quarter horse. So we have papers for him as well. He's a papered horse. So the papered ones are the ones that have been registered somewhere. They know who the dam and the sire are, who the parents are, who the grandparents are kind of idea. <clears throat> and any brothers and sisters. So they keep track of these things. So there's no inbreeding. And uh, generally when they're kept track of, They'll, they'll sell for a little more because you know where they've come from. You know exactly what they are. Knowledge is power. Okay, uh, next question. Okay, so somebody asked, and uh, this question has definitely come up in the past, when talking about Gracie or doing all the work that I had been doing with Gracie in the beginning, because she came, uh, you know, under, under different circumstances than we've received horses before. And uh, she was... She was, uh, I guess, labeled as sort of hard to handle, which she was in the beginning a little bit. And then she sort of settled down, but she's still not that great socially with other horses. And uh, I got the question of, uh, <clears throat> I wonder whether Gracie didn't have the opportunity to learn good horse manners when she was younger. Perhaps she only played with younger horses. I think so. I think that she didn't really get that, that I don't know though. So, you know, I'm just saying, maybe. Uh, because she seems to have a little bit of trouble hanging out with the older crowd and, and uh, they're continuously sort of teaching her, or pushing her back or mm, tolerating her, things like that. So it's hard to say exactly, but she is coming along. She is sort of learning and she has settled down a little bit. Um, okay, next question. Okay, so I got another question from Patricia who comments quite a bit. Thank you for, for commenting so much it's really nice uh, she says what do you think of shoes and having a bit in their mouths some people say if a bit is used correctly then it's okay but I'm not sure um, pretty controversial topic if you watch this channel for long enough you'll see that I don't use any bits uh, I have a preference not to every horse that I've ever ridden has responded better without one so for me it's about seeing how the horse responds, how they react, how well they do. Now, whether or not, you know, the, the question will be, well, are you too hard with your hands? And I don't believe so. I don't believe that I, I pull or tug or hold on too much. Um, I think that for the horses that I have worked with, they just tend to respond better to a hackamore or a side pull or a halter, something along those lines. It's just my experience. I'm not saying that every horse would be like that. Now, there are different cultures in the horse world where you, they, the, the riders uh, feel like a bit is required to get certain movements done, certain maneuvers done, 
and whatnot. So that's just how that culture sees riding and sees horses. Uh, as for shoes, it's being more and more proven that shoes, uh, depending on the trim and depending how they are put on, are proving quite detrimental to the health of the foot. Um, I've done a bunch of horse hoof videos. I'll try to link to them below so you guys can see where I'm coming from and the evidence that I have seen and show and understand scientifically because uh, we do do dissections of cadaver feet and check out what's going on inside, why it's going on inside. It doesn't mean that all shoeings or all shod horses have poor feet or will have poor feet, um, but there's quite a lot of them. And it doesn't mean barefoot don't have either, but when asking about whether or not shoes are bad, th that's how this comes up, is that uh, a lot of them have nail holes that are going in the wrong place, uh, shoes that are just too small, too big, too whatever. Um, it's hard work, you know, it's very hard work being a farrier, so I wouldn't, you know, say that I know how everybody's work is, but I do know that some shoeing, yeah, definitely no good. And the other thing about it, majority of the time when I'm asked to take shoes off and trim a horse's hoof up, um, the stuff that's stuck underneath the shoe, that's embedded in there, rocks and, and, and gravel and sand and dirt and rot, um, to me, I find it pretty detrimental to let alone to leave that on for six weeks because most people can't afford uh, a shorter trim cycle of six weeks because it's very expensive to do shoeing. Around here I think it's 200 bucks or something like that for four feet, maybe move more, I'm not sure. So you do any more than that it becomes quite expensive. So the cost of maintenance of shoes can also be detrimental because a cycle for a trim should be, in my opinion, three to four weeks. That's that's a pretty good trim cycle. That would keep things tight, and manageable, and not grow out deformations. I can cover this if you guys are interested. Let me know in the comments, along with where on earth did you guys come from? Um, uh, below if you wanna know more about that. I've got all kinds of information I can, I can put out. So hopefully that helps, Patricia. Okay, uh, the next question. She says, I was told once that the reason horses tend to have different reactions to different sizes is because their eyes are on either side of their head, because they're a prey animal, uh, means their brains are wired differently to ours, hence the difference to one side or the other. I don't know if this has been proven yet. Um, there's a lot of information out there regarding, um, I should probably put these guys in the frame. Here comes Luke. Hey, buddy. Uh, you know, do they react differently on one side or the other? Yes. Can horses be one-sided? Yes. But I also think that humans are more one-sided. And there is something to be said about uh, sort of being used to, or them being used to, and you being used to working on one side. Uh, are their brains separated? It feels that way sometimes, but I'm not sure if it is. You know, it's hard to it's hard to tell exactly what's going on, but you do need to work both sides of the horse. Um, it's good exercise as well, but it's good for their brains. Hi, buddy. It's nice having Luke here, isn't it? Okay. Um, so I don't really know exactly, but I do know that when I'm working with horses, what it, what what do you want? When I'm working with them, I'm working both sides because if you only work one side, pretty soon you're going to have trouble. And I think one of the main reason is, is, uh, ooh, he's breathing in my ear. Is this safe? Is this a good idea? Should you let your horse do this? Mm, it's iffy. Is he gonna start nibbling on me? Has he got his lips on me? Yes. Do I like it? Not really. Am I gonna let him? Eh, sure, Lou, okay. Um, but I do know that horses will try to keep safety on one side and danger on the other and they'll be more used to doing that on one side or the other so you have to get them used to both so for me it doesn't really matter if their brains are wired differently uh, when i look at the results of the things that i do or the things that i don't do um, i see that i need to do both sides equally sometimes one side a little more than the other you are just a big snuggle bug okay um, next question. What? I'm trying to read here. Um, I had a question 
I had a question about uh, Fury, who was an Arabian horse that was here for a couple months. And uh, he left uh, not as far as long as we all wanted him to leave off on. Uh, so somebody said to me, uh, I viewed past videos and watched one about Fury. Since he's not with you, what progress did he make? He returned to his owner. Were you pleased with his progress or told to, or did he hold on to his fears and worries? And then a follow-up question to that. I'm going to try to answer this all at once. Uh, when he went home, was he less worried about being ridden? What the? Did you see that? You're in big trouble. I'm going to punch you in the eyeball. I'm just kidding. Come here. So, don't do that. Don't let your horse... That's not cool. Why were you nibbling on? Did you want to play? I don't want to play like that. I don't like playing like that with horses. So. Anyhow, was he less worried about being ridden? Did the owners communicate with you about their horse progress? Are there horses that you are unable to rehab? If so, what happened? Oh, lots of questions here. He's a great example. Um, horses don't... You're going to be in... You're going to have to back up. Back up. Back up. Stay over there. He's getting too nimbly. Means he wants my attention and he wants me to do something with him. Um, it's not safe, even though he's pretty much my safest horse around. I don't really appreciate that. <clears throat> so, he's a good example. And horses always leave here unfinished. I would never say that there's a finished horse that ever leaves here. Because um, they've all got something that they still need to do. The Mustang is a great example. Um, well, any, any of the horses that were here. Any of the horses that are here. Look at this guy. He's a pest, aren't you? <laughs> um, so when when they do leave here, they still got stuff. Now it doesn't mean that you know we have a goal and we did or didn't meet it. That's different. Um, usually we have some kind of goal. We want to get them past something. Whether it's trailer training, whether it's riding, whether it's being able to do good groundwork, have good manners, all those kinds of things. So when Fury left here, he left not quite done what we wanted to get done because he actually started to regress a little. That is common. Those kinds of things happen an awful lot. Um, and I would say that this is mostly, you know, up to the human to kind of get figured out. And sometimes you got to sort of push a little, find out where you can get to, and you find out that maybe you've missed something somewhere and you got to go back and fill the gaps in. A lot of people get discouraged when they find their horse not progressing as well as they did you know, it may be in the beginning and then suddenly they get to something and there's a roadblock or they start to go backwards. It only means that there was a gap somewhere that wasn't filled, in my mind. So then you have to kind of go back and search for that. Well, what was that gap? Where did we miss, uh, you know, a step that would lead to getting to something else? Is there something health related going on? Um, so that was sort of his case where there was either something, you know, maybe a little bit of health related or a gap that I didn't catch. Um, and with enough time, you can work these things out. He wasn't able to stay here that long, so I wasn't able to get it worked out. Did you just do that again? You're going to be... I'm going to punch you in the eyeball. I really am. Ugh. Okay, come here. Let's give you a big hug. And then send you backwards. Goodbye. Thank you. All right, so... It does happen. Do I, do I communicate with the owners of the horses that have been here? Absolutely, as often as I can, as often as they want, I suppose. If they have any questions, I'm always open to questions, uh, you know, ideas, things that I might do or wouldn't do, uh, things that they're doing. Are they a good idea? Are they a bad idea? Whatever, things like that. So, you know, it doesn't always work out great. It doesn't always work out perfect. Um, and that's just working with both people and horses. And that's just the nature of the of the of the business so hopefully hopefully that answer if you if you bug me just stand there and be good be good stop it it feels good for him you know you see he's just got look at that i don't know what you want do you want to rest your head okay next question uh, okay, I did I did a video on the main goal of groundwork with horses. I'll try to link to it below if I can remember to do that. You're taking up my attention. Everybody's paying attention to you, saying that's a bad horse. Do you want that? Hmm? No. Uh, okay, so the main goal of groundwork the main goal of groundwork with horses is to be able to move them around and understand or have them understand that you're 
moving them. And <clears throat> with groundwork, you can you can apply the the methods that you use to when you go to ride, so you have a safer ride. You don't you know have as much trouble. So somebody says, "Well said," but what about the horse that is being extremely pushy and threatening to bite you, even with basic groundwork? Not looking at anybody today. Uh, I'm thinking round pen training to keep their feet moving and energy out before trying basic groundwork when he refuses to stand still long enough. Yes, any other ideas or suggestions? This is a really good question. I almost think that this is a video all in itself. But the basics, if a horse is not listening, if a horse feels like it needs to be pushy and aggressive, stop it. What if I pulled your nose hairs and stuff? Is that what you want? He doesn't even care. He wants to do the same thing. Okay, I'm teaching you bad habits. Stay back there, back more. This is what you should be able to get done. When you ask nicely, I don't need a rope, I don't need a stick, I don't need some kind of training aid of some sorts. So just ask him to get back and he'll pay attention. Um, if you're in a round pen, if you're in a situation, a paddock, who cares where it is? And you're with a horse that is pushy or threatening. Um, there's something to be said to stick them in a round pen and chase them around, but usually you won't get what you want unless you have really super good timing, in my opinion. And this is a big topic. I don't have a round pen. I did a video on why I don't have a round pen. But the main thing is it's really hard to find the gaps when you have a round pen because they can only go in circles. There's no way for them to escape. Um, if they do go to escape, then you find your gap. So if you don't allow them to make a mistake or allow them to go in a different way, then you'll never know if they're going that way. The other thing about a round pen, a lot of horses will go around in a round pen with their head on the outside. It's very hard to correct that unless you've got just impeccable timing. So I would suggest more of halter work, halter and lead rope work. And you're gonna wanna get them to where they'll just do a nice back and forth. And I teach this all the time because you can do it anywhere. You can do it in a little alleyway. You can do it like an alleyway of a barn. You can do it in a paddock. You can do it in an arena. You can do it in a round pen. You can do it in a trailer where you just ask them to go back and come forward and go back and come forward. And one of the people that I respect a lot in the horse world that teaches, he says, Buck Brenneman, in case you're wondering, he says, it should be like a marble on glass. When you, when you kind of go like this, they should go like that. When you go back, they should come back. And it should be really, really smooth. Get something like that. If they've got a lot of energy, back them further. Then bring them forward. Reward them. Reassure them. Usually, horses like this are scared. It's weird. And it may be kind of counterintuitive, but they're worried. That's an all-worried horse. Okay, moving on. I, I know that's sort of the simplistic version of it. I wouldn't say go and chase them around further. I think that makes it worse. Definitely don't run them out of energy. I don't have any purpose of running a horse out of energy. <laughs> okay, last question. Um, why choose gravel for paddocks? And you have the answer correct in that, yes, it's wet. Get away from the camera. Back up. The, uh, the gravel in the paddocks is to keep things dry. Um, it's much easier to clean. Mud or dirt and grass and stuff like that, horses just make a mess out of it. It's too rainy here. So we have to use gravel. Um, it keeps it dry, allows water to run off, and it's easy to clean, which makes uh, horse husbandry much easier. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed that Q&A, January 2019. Again, please, if you're watching to the end of this, thank you very much. Um, and if you could let me know where you've come from, we're very, very curious. We really want to, we really want to know, because we can't figure it out. Hi, buddy. Um, so, <laughs> so that's it. Thanks for watching, you guys, and we'll see you tomorrow when I get to update you on everything that's going on around here. Ah, watch out for the camera.